To make sense of L'Hopital's rule, why it works, let's think. Let's think in terms of Taylor expansion and see what L'Hopital's rule really means. Let's consider the following situation where L'Hopital's rule would be appropriate. Assume that you have an improper limit of the form 0 over 0. So we are considering the limit as x goes to a of, let's say, f of x divided by g of x. And if you were to evaluate this at x equals a, you would get 0 over 0. So what do we do? Well, instead of doing L'Hopital's, let's Taylor expand about this limit point. This is going to give us the limit as x goes to a of what? When I Taylor expand f of x about a, we get f of a plus the derivative of f at a times x minus a. And then you get the second order term and the third order term. You get this polynomial in quantity x minus a. Do the same thing for the denominator for g of x, beginning with g of a, then the first derivative times x minus a, then 1 over 2 factorial times the second derivative times x minus a squared. Keep going, keep going. Now, what does this do for us? Well, we know, based on our assumption, that f of a is 0. g of a is 0. Both of those terms vanish. So get rid of those guys, and what do we have? Aha! We have polynomials in quantity x minus a. We can factor out that common term of quantity x minus a and cancel from the numerator from the denominator. When we do so, now the leading order term in the top and the bottom is the derivative evaluated at a. And so if we evaluate this entire expression at x equals a, what do we get? All the higher order terms vanish. We're left with the ratio of the derivatives. That's L'Hopital's rule coming straight from Taylor series. Oh, but wait, what happens if both of these derivatives are zero? That's the case where L'Hopital's rule does not work the first time. So let's keep going. Get rid of those two terms. What do we have? Aha, now we can factor out an additional x minus a term, cancel from the numerator and the denominator. What do we have left? The leading order terms are the second derivatives evaluated at a. And so we get the ratio of the second derivatives. Now you might be saying, hey, wait, what about that 1 over 2 factorial? That wasn't in L'Hopital's rule. Well, that's fine. It cancels from the top and the bottom. And you may say, well, wait a minute. What if both of these second derivatives vanish? Then we repeat, we do it again until, in the end, hopefully, we get to something that works. Something that when we evaluate at x equals a, we get a sensible ratio. That ratio will be a ratio of derivatives. And that is why L'Hopital's rule works the way it does. Let's see this in the context of an example. Consider the limit as x goes to 0 of, in the numerator, x times e to the x times sine of 3x, and in the denominator, 1 minus cosine of 2x. Now, this is definitely an improper limit. If I evaluate at 0, I get 0 over 0. So we could use L'Hopital's rule to get at this, but let's do it with Taylor expansions instead, since we already know the Taylor series for these basic components. Consider the limit as x goes to 0 of what? In the numerator, we're going to expand this out. We get x times e to the x, which is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial. Keep going. All of that times sine of quantity 3x. That is 3x minus, let's see, 3x cubed. That's 27x cubed divided by 3 factorial. Keep going. In the denominator, we have 1 minus the Taylor series for cosine of 2 times x which is 1 minus 2x quantity squared over 2 factorial, and then higher order terms. Now, what matters is the leading order terms. So if I look in the numerator, I've got an x times the leading order term in e to the x, which is 1, times the leading order term in sine of 3x, which is 3x. In the denominator, I have these 1s, but those are going to cancel. 
And that's going to leave the leading order term as being the next term in that Taylor series for cosine of 2x with the minus sign out in front. That's going to simplify after I do a little bit of work off on a piece of paper to the limit as x goes to 0 of, in the numerator, a polynomial that begins with 3x squared. In the denominator, a polynomial that begins with 2 x squared. Factoring out an x squared from all these terms, canceling top and bottom, evaluating at x equals 0 leaves me with the answer 3 halves. Now that was pretty simple. We could have used L'Hopital's rule to get at this, but because the leading order terms in the top and the bottom were quadratic terms, degree 2 terms, this would have required applying L'Hopital's rule twice. We are really seeing the ratio of the second derivatives of these terms.